give another round of applause for the amazing University of Washington drumline. Interesting fact, did you know Dolly Parton was a member of her drumline in her high school in Tennessee? That is incredible. This was a special treat for her. Hello everybody, I'm Brooke Fisher-Clark. I'm the Executive Director of the Imagination Library of Washington. And my handsome escort today is an Imagination Library graduate, and not just an Imagination Library graduate, but my son, Baron. Wave up, everybody, Baron. Thank you, son. <sighs> I want to describe to you what it feels like from up here in this being. For me, it is like the excitement and joy of all my favorite holidays and festivities wrapped into one day. It is like waking up on my wedding day with great anticipation, like the butterflies on the first day of school, and like the breathlessness and relief of reaching the top of a mountain. We did something remarkable for Washington's early learners together. And my heart just wants to jump out and dance around this room with all of you. We did it, Washington. <laughs> to commemorate this extraordinary journey and achievement, I have written a poem to share with you. It is called A Dream Realized in Washington. What extraordinary goodness comes from collaboration? This statewide milestone is a colossal demonstration. Washington is now covered from the hills to the sea. This journey has ignited action for early literacy. Giving children access to books is the golden key, where they will learn, connect, and become prepared for opportunity. A rich home library they get to build and Dolly's dream will be fulfilled. Like a brilliant chatoyant, our children will beam, inspired by reading, connection, and building skills and self-esteem. A ripple of results will wash ashore, uplifting our households and cities galore. Serendipity, is that what brought us to this destination? It could be but led by a collective passion and unwavering determination. The ink of our efforts has dried and history has been made. And now we continue program illumination so these pages of hard work don't ever fade. On this blissful summer day, we pause to celebrate and let our gratitude and joy shine and permeate Dear Dolly, you've inspired us to rise. In Washington, we will ensure that your dream realized never dies. I used to tell people in my presentations around the state that I wasn't alone and that I brought guests with me. And they kind of looked at me strange, and I said, they couldn't see my guests, but they would fill the room and out the door for miles. I told them that I always brought the 455,000 early learners in Washington State with me in spirit. Because every day, it was our team's mission and passion to ensure that every single one of them had an advocate, helping, to have, helping them to have access to this opportunity that could enhance their life or even change the course of it for the better. It is just stunning to be able to say all 455,000 early learners in Washington now have access to enroll in Dolly Parton's Imagination Library, and I just imagine them all smiling. They have a chance to receive a free monthly book mailed to their home until their fifth birthday, and it doesn't matter their background, location, or circumstance. 
This is all for them, and it is the best feeling to know that we are giving our children this very powerful and impactful gift. There are so many heroes to thank for helping us reach this victory for our kids. Team Imagination Library of Washington, Angela and Elena, we did it. United Ways of the Pacific Northwest, Jim Cooper watching from abroad and our United Ways of the Pacific Northwest family, the Dollywood Foundation, Nick, Paul, I see you out there. Local program affiliates, let's hear it. I know you're filling the room. <laughs> Including one that's close to my heart, United Way of Cowlitz and Wakayakum counties. I see you over there. Office of the Superintendent of Public Instruction and Department of Children, Youth, and Families. Our lawmakers, the Washington Legislature and Governor Inslee. And to all our funding and community partners and families, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I also want to give a huge shout out to our event committee who helped put this whole program together today. All right, we have an exciting program for you, so let's keep this moving. Before I introduce our next presenters, I want to let you in on a little intel. If you stick around the very end of the program, there may be something you can walk away with signed by our icon, Dolly. It is now my pleasure to introduce two champions that made this possible for Washington to become the 11th statewide program in the nation and the very first on the West Coast. Please welcome from the Washington Legislature, Representatives Monica Stonier and Peter Abarno. So it's really amazing to see this amazing crowd out here. So uh, Representative Stonier and I thought it'd be a good idea to take a selfie with all of you if you want. So let's, uh, let's do a quick selfie so you can see how amazing you all look. <laughs> I am just thrilled to be here celebrating the launch of Dolly Parton's Imagination Library here in Washington State with you all. Um, I was so excited to work with my friends from United Way on this bill when they first brought it to me as an idea, because when I'm not in Olympia working as a lawmaker, I am working in schools as a teacher, and my focus is in literacy and reading in middle and high schools. It's clear to me that many of the students that I see in classrooms who don't have strong footing in literacy are on tenuous paths in their futures. Did you know that research can tell us that one of the indicators that determines how well a child will do in school can be dependent on whether or not they are born and home in a text-rich environment? That just simply means what's laying around the house that can be read, magazines, books, tablets with books on them. The Imagination Library puts books in the hands of children at such an early age and all across our state, but with the magic of Dolly Parton, pers her personalized Imagination Library Chess with her personal touch.
Thank you, Representative Stonier. I, I'm honored to just be here uh, with you celebrating the growth and expansion of this amazing program throughout the state of Washington. The Imagination Library, started by an amazing woman, Dolly Parton. Uh, and I wanna thank Representative Stonier and really echo her thoughts uh, and thank all of my colleagues in the state legislature for helping make this day happen. And thank you, the United Ways of the Pacific Northwest for leading the way on early learning and literacy. Uh, without you, without Brooke and Angela and the entire team, none of this would happen. So thank you very much. <laughs> I, I remember learning about the Imagination Library in Southwest Washington through um, our County United Way and our Rotary Clubs and instantly became a huge fan. A way to prepare our children for school and an activity that we can do together as a family. Uh, my children who are now uh, 10 and 12 years old were young at the time, but I remember the excitement uh, my family had when that monthly Imagination Library book came and how we were all excited to kind of come together and read a new story together. Because reading together not only helps our children to become kindergarten ready, it created quality family time. We focused on us. And I think that, to me, is the best part of Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. Not only does it prepare our children for school, but it helps build more connected families. I'm sure many of you know the book, The Code of Many Colors, a book written by and about Dolly Parton herself. Uh, in it, she describes how her mother of little financial means sewed colorful patches together to make a coat of many colors. And while others may not have been able to see the richness in that coat or the richness in her family, it made Dolly the person she is today, and we're so thankful for that. But like those colorful patches, we as families, as parents, reading these books, sew stories, sew memories together, and we create richness and we build character within our children. The Dolly Parton Imagination Library is so much more than just the Imagination Library. It's an integral part to helping end intergenerational poverty by building stronger families, by building stronger communities, and by building a stronger Washington. On behalf of everyone here and everyone watching and everyone who's participated in this program, I wanna thank you for your continued support of our families and our children in Washington and your support for Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. Thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Stonier and Abarno, and thank you so much to the Washington Legislature and Governor Inslee again. It is now time to pull at your heartstrings with some entertainment. I am excited to present to you the very talented Tacoma Youth Symphony performing two of our icon Dolly's hit songs. Please welcome the Tacoma Youth Symphony.
Hi, it's me again. Look at that. Wasn't that amazing? Thank you so much to Coma Youth Symphony and Anna Jensen. That was amazing. Give us just a second. We're regrouping as these shows. There's a lot of things to it. We're getting ready for the next phase of it. I hope you're still excited. I kind of get now, this is what it's like on the Academy Awards, right? <laughs> Putting on a big show. It's a lot to it. All right. Well, it is now my honor to welcome to the stage one of the leaders of our Evergreen State. Please welcome Lieutenant Governor Denny Heck. Thank you, Brooke. Might I all just also acknowledge the president of Washington State's outstanding First Lady, Trudy Inslee. <laughs> On behalf of the leader of our state, Jay Inslee, it is my privilege to present this proclamation that reads as follows. Whereas early literacy skills form the building blocks for a successful academic career and prepare children to develop critical skills they need to become thoughtful and effective leaders. And whereas early access to books promotes the growth of children's minds and skills during a pivotal time in their development. And whereas celebrated musician and performer Dolly Parton is widely regarded not only for her achievement in the arts, but also as an author, businesswoman, and noted humanitarian and philanthropist. And whereas Dolly Parton's Imagination Library was launched in 1995 to foster a love of reading among children and ensure equitable access to books and now mails one free age-appropriate book to children every month from birth to age five in the United States, Australia, Canada, the Republic of Ireland, and the United Kingdom. And whereas since its formation, Dolly Parton's Imagination Library has provided over 211 million books to children worldwide. And whereas more than 65,000 children in Washington are enrolled in Dolly Parton's Imagination Library with more than 1.6 million books gifted across the state. Now, therefore, I, J. Inslee, Governor of the State of Washington, do hereby declare and proclaim August 15th, 2023, as Dolly Parton's Imagination Library Day in Washington. And I urge all people in our state to join me in this special observance signed this 31st day of July, 2023, Governor J. Inslee. I am, I am tempted to say at the end of this day, Lord, I'm ready, now take me. <laughs> and I want to just say, and I sure, I'm sure I have all of your permission to do this, to Dolly, we will always love you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the stage, Dolly Parton. Woo! Woo! Hi there! My goodness! There's a lot of you out there! <laughs> Hello there! How are you? Thank you for having me. Well, this is a nice welcome. I wanted to say hello to the state of Washington, but Tacoma, how are you doing? <laughs> You want to sit down over there? No, oh, yeah, heck, I'm... Got this morning from Thank Pike you. Place Market in Seattle. Oh, wonderful. And in a vase that was handmade at the Tacoma Glass Museum. Oh, well, thank you. That's nice. So you got stuff for me? And yeah. that's your gift for me? Well, I think I have something for you, too. Is this where I have it? This actually is for the whole state of Washington. I signed my name on it. Just something my little 
You want to pull the rag off of it, it is yours. All right. <laughs> it's actually my little uh, coat of many colors, oh. a big, ex, ex, big size. Of course, this is one of the books that's in the Imagination Library that I have written. It's from a song. I'm sure all of you know it, and I'll be singing it a little bit later on. But I just wanted you to have this to keep for us, just to say, well, this is, uh, here we are. We're going all over the state of Washington, and that is just a wonderful thing. Just think of all the books we're going to put in the hands of so many children. That's great. So you gave me flowers, and I gave you the coat of many colors to commemorate this day. So thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Now, you're not going to be the one to... to no, uh, I'm going to bring out somebody okay. much smarter, much better looking. Oh, I doubt that. He's very handsome, ain't he? <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Did you get that, honey? <laughs> oh, is that your wife that's, down there? That's my, that's my wife. We're newlyweds, Dolly. Oh, how, how new? 48 years. 48. Well, I got one on you. I've been married for 57 years. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, we wouldn't trade them in now. I wouldn't want to do it again. I would, I would want to break in another one, would you, at this stage? <laughs> Only her. I know. Well, congratulations to all of you. Boy, this is a good crowd. And what a beautiful Let's... theater. I was just thinking I'd love to come here and sing sometime. Do a show. Be great. Let me bring out that better looking, smarter, other statewide elected official to have a really important conversation with you. One oh, of my okay. favorite people in this state, as a matter of fact. Please welcome to the stage now, State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Chris Reichdahl. Okay, Chris. <laughs> How about a nice hand for Hick? Good to see you. Are we going Let's to sit head over on here? Over. Okay, I believe we're going to chat for a while. You pick is, the is seat, this I pick the questions. You got you, it, right okay, there. Okay, I'll sit right here then. Okay, ooh, this is a nice chair. Local furniture. Finest Washington <laughs> chairs. How do you like my flowers? Ain't they beautiful? They're beautiful. They really like are. you, Dolly Parton. Oh, Ladies and well, gentlemen, Dolly you. Parton. <laughs> well, that's nice. Boy, I swear, this is a great crowd. I had a chance to meet a lot of you out there taking pictures, but I'm sure I didn't meet everybody. Look at this nice place. All right, well, anyway, I, you know, I'm a talker, so what do I, you know? I promise you that in this fireside chat, if we could have put seven and a half million Washingtonians in this room, seven and a half million people would have come to see you. Oh, I guarantee well, you that. Oh, that's sweet. How many does this hold? I'm curious. How many does this hold? Do you know? How many what? How many people does this building hold? Uh, there's a few thousand. Two thousand? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm seriously thinking this would be a beautiful place to do a show. Do you do many concerts here? I think a Dolly Parton concert in the next year or two would be incredible. Well, I'm just throwing it out good. there. Yeah. We may do that sometime, but yeah. this is actually is a, is a beautiful place. Do you have many concerts here? No, there's some Musical concerts. Musical concerts, yeah. little theater here, a little oh, bit of Oh, yeah, everything. I bet you do do a lot of theater. Yeah. Well, anyway. I'm, I got a question for you, Dolly okay, Parton. Okay, well, then ask it. <laughs> and I... We got questions. We got questions. We need answers. I will say as I came in here, I heard a fun fact, and I want to confirm it. On this day, when you were 13 years old, the first day you performed on the Grand Old Opry. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I know. That was one of the most exciting times of my whole life. I was scared to death, and Johnny Cash had introduced me, and I thought that was just I, I knew that everybody was listening to me back home on the radio. Oh. Me and my Uncle Bill used to travel back and forth trying to get me on the Opry. But that was a real special time, singing at the Ryman Auditorium where all those great people had been on that stage. So that kind of started my career. I started when I was 10 singing on local radio and television. Uh, but that was a biggie to get to sing on the Grand Old Opry. And here we are now. An unbelievably iconic career. Your heart and passion is in something uh, so big, so, I would just say, iconically American, and that is a love for reading. Tell us about the Imagination Library. You came all the way to the state of Washington. What does this mean to you? 
Well, I came all the way here because I'm very, very proud, as you said, of the Imagination Library. It's, I'm sure you know, it's where we give books to children from the time they're born. They get a book in the mail once a month with their little name on it. And you remember yourself getting mail first time you ever got a piece of mail with your name on it? It was special, right? So I wanted the kids to feel like that this was just for them. And so when they get old enough to wait for that in the mailbox, they're going to get that book, and they're going to make somebody sit down with them and read it. They are. And so uh, I think it really instills a love for reading and, and the love for books. I wrote a little song uh, for the Imagination Library. It says something about books, books. I love books the way they feel and smell and look. From my first look, I was hooked on books, books, books. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, and I want all kids to kind of feel like that when they get their little books. So anyway, it's, it's been a long time. It's been uh, almost 30 years, I guess, now that I started the program. Well, your inspiration is unbelievable. I will tell you, you have made my career come full circle just with your inspiration. This young lady who is, quite frankly, the new mother of this entire program in the state of Washington, Brooke Fisher-Clark, is, is a former student of mine. Oh, good deal. And she came to us and she said, I'm doing this really cool thing in Southwest Washington. What would it look like if we got this thing a little bit bigger? And we've got Congressman Derek Kilmer and his beautiful family here. We've got other folks uh, from congressional dollars, aid dollars, to a decision in my office, to incredible legislators who spoke today, to so many people. We have made this baby go statewide as fast as any state possible. You have a personal story, though, about literacy that just moves you. Tell us about well, that. Well, actually, the way that I started it, a lot of you may or may not know the story, but my, uh, my people were very poor people, rural people. We grew up way back in the mountains of, of East Tennessee, up in, in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park area. And uh, my dad uh, was from a big family. There's 12 of us kids. I have, uh, there's six boys and six girls in my own family, mamas and daddy's kids. And of course, uh, that's a lot of mouths to feed. But my dad had grown up even harder than we did. And he was from my large family too. I think there's 13 or 14 of those kids. And back in the mountains like that, a lot of people didn't get a chance to go to school. And they had to stay home and work the fields and do what it took to kind of keep uh, the rest of the family eating. And the, and the schools were like one-room schools way off. So my dad couldn't read and write. And that troubled him, and he was embarrassed by that. But Daddy was so smart. I've often thought, now, I wonder what all Daddy could have been had he been able to read and write with that great intelligence that he had. So I knew Daddy was troubled by that, and he felt like that he couldn't learn to read and write after he was grown. It was just one of those things. So one day I got the idea. I thought, I am going to start a program, and I'm going to make my daddy help me with it. So I came up with the idea to start a program where we did give books to children in their young years when they're most impressionable, where they can learn to read and write. So I got my daddy all involved in that, and he took such pride in it because he really was a help to me because Daddy was really smart, and he would have great ideas, you know, when I'd talk to him about it. So anyway, my Daddy got to live long enough to, you know, to see it, you know, come to be really a lot of what it was. But when I started it, I was thinking, well, you know, if it'll be good here in our little county of Sevier County. And I thought if we were lucky, maybe it'd go a couple of counties over. But the next thing you know, Governor Phil Bredesen, who was the governor of Tennessee at that time, well, he loved the program, so he took it statewide. And, of course, that was the beginning of it. And my daddy, he was so happy about that. And he, had, he got a bigger kick out of people calling me the book lady than he did about Dolly Parton, the star. <laughs> it was like, but he got to live long enough to see it doing well. And uh, now we, like they talked on the stage a minute ago, now we're all over the world, different places, and we've given over 200 million books since we started. And I know my daddy's always looking down saying, we did it, we did it. <laughs> so anyway, it's very personal to me. And I think when you, when you do take on 
a charity to support. It really needs to be something that's personal to you and that that's, you're passionate about. And, of course, I, I do other things, but I don't think I'll ever do anything more important or more personal to me than this because the kids are our future, as they say. Inspiring. You have been recently awarded um, by the Bezos Courage and Civility Award with, with that award and a $100 million philanthropic gift for you to do whatever you want to do to create more incredible miracles in, in this country. Tell us about that gift and what's planned. Well, first of all, that was a big surprise. I remember <laughs> I was in L.A. I was doing some business, and I had I have a little apartment out there, and I got this call. Somebody said, Jeff Bezos is trying to get in touch with you, and I said, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I did. I said, no, they said, seriously. I said, well, what for? I thought, well, maybe he was wanting me to do some commercial for Amazon or something. And so I said, well, I guess I have to call him because it is Jeff Bezos. And so I called him, and he said, well, I would like to give you, uh, you know, the award this year of $100 million. And, of course, I about fell out of my chair. I said, is this a joke, and is this really Jeff Bezos? <laughs> And he said, no, I'm serious. I've seen a lot of the work that you do and a lot of the good things you, you try to do for people. And so I think you'd be somebody that would spend it wisely. So I said, well, I can't thank you enough. I certainly will do that. And, of course, they publicized that. And then, I mean, I got every call from everybody in the world wanting me to give that money. I guess they thought that I had it in my ruler pocket, you know, in my <laughs> or in my bib pocket or in my pocketbook. I don't know. And so I had to kind of let that die down because I'm the kind of person that I just don't go out spending money unless I think about it. And all my charity work, I always try to let my heart lead me on that, and it usually does. I'm always drawn to certain things that I do. But I did tell him right away, I said, well, I guarantee you that one of the big things I'm going to donate to is the Imagination Library where we can go worldwide and get more books in the hands of more children. And he said he understood that. So I will be doing a lot of that. But I like doing things for children. I have other children's programs that I'm involved with. And, of course, I like working with seniors. I like doing a lot of that as well. So charity begins at home, so I'm doing a lot of good things in East Tennessee and in around Nashville. And a big part of it is still working with children. But that money is going to go good. I have 10 years to spend that money, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he said the only strings attached that it has to go to charity. I said, well, did you think I was going to go buy a car or something <laughs> with it? <laughs> but seriously, I do have 10 years, and there will be many things that will come up that I'll feel passionate about. So just trust me, I will spend it wisely, and I will let my heart lead me as I do on everything else. But thanks to him, awesome. I did see... I did see where uh, uh, Bezos had donated $100 million to Maui and the fires they had there. So that was nice of him. He's got a lot of money, and that's a good way to spend it, to helping people. Fantastic. Let's transition to one of the most iconic careers in the history of the United States of America. Yours. <laughs> You've got a new album coming out. I do. It's called Rockstar. You collaborate with more than 40 artists. You're going to know these songs. You're going to transform music once again. Uh, these folks have been making music for more than eight decades. You've pulled them all together because they'd do anything for Dolly Parton. What inspired a rock album, and when do we get to stream this baby? Well, this don't have a whole lot to do with the Imagination Library. But <laughs> That's right. But it does have a little bit to do with Washington. You know, I worked with Brandi Carlisle on it. She's from Washington. I also worked with Ann Wilson, who's also from Washington. I did Magic Man with, uh, with Ann, and I did um, uh, I Can't Get No Satisfaction with Brandy and uh, Pink, who I love. But I actually... Me too. I know, don't everybody. Uh, but actually... I had often thought of, that I might end my career to leave, you know, for my legacy, as they say. 
a rock album because my husband loves rock and roll and always has. He's cracked my eardrums for years, uh, having his, you know, the car radio or the truck radio or the house turned up to full blast. The louder, the better, and the more acid rock, the better. <laughs> but anyway, I knew all these songs, and I loved them, and I had done a few covers of, of some rock songs through the years, and I thought, well, maybe do it. But then the years got to go on by, and I thought, oh, I'm going to be too old to do that. Then they up and put me in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And, and I thought, remember there was a, I didn't mean to start any kind of controversy over it. I just didn't think I deserved it. So I said I didn't want it because I thought that I was taking away votes from people in the rock business that had spent their life in that like I had spent my life in country music. Now I'll take anything they'll give me in country because... <laughs> I feel like I've earned it as much as anybody else. Is that's, well, that's how I spend my life. So that wouldn't have been, you know, anything. Uh, it would have been a compliment. But when they said, you know, they wanted to put me in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I thought, and then they talked me into it, and I, I did accept it gracefully. And then I, I'm that much like my daddy. If somebody's going to give me something, I'm going to earn it. I don't want nobody giving me nothing. So I thought, well, timing is perfect. So if I'm going to ever do one, I'm going to do it now. I'm going to earn my place in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So <laughs> I do have, I did a rock album, and we have, uh, we have a lot of great people like Paul McCartney and Ringo on the same record. And, of course, we, as you mentioned those, we got Steven Tyler. We got Stevie Nicks. Uh, we got, Lord, I don't even know who all. Uh, Elton John. We got so many great, great people on it, so I hope you'll enjoy it. My country fans always like to see me doing different things because, you know, I'm, I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to try to do as much as I can. <laughs> well, I mean, sooner or later. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I do hope you enjoy the album, and I'm sure I'll be donating some of that money to the, to the Imagination Library as it's gonna, well. It's going to yeah. be amazing. It's yeah. going to be amazing. And it comes out in November. So, I have to ask you this last question, Dolly. This is, uh, this is personal. I am in the business of education. So are you. So is everybody in this room. It's bipartisan. It's every state. It's every American. We love our children. We are starving for the civility and the grace to treat each other with respect and dignity. It feels at times. You have been absolutely emblematic in leading this powerful career. You've inspired us. You do it with such grace and kindness. What advice do you have for educators here, future students, these young readers that we're getting books into the hands of? Tell us about what grace means and respect and, and what you would have them think about as they live their lives. Well, to me, I think one of the things that, uh, that we've lost in this world today is respect uh, for one another, I just it just kills me to see that even no matter what, if, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, we're still human beings. You know, we don't have to be so mean to each other. I think common decency and kindness, we're not all supposed to be alike. Remember what they say about variety being the spice of life? But that doesn't mean we can't be good neighbors. We can't get, be good people. So I would think that everybody should just treat other people the way that they want to be treated or the way that you would want your family to be treated, your children or your, your mom or your dad. So to me, I think it's just about respect and listening and being compassionate because people all over the world are exactly alike. Everybody has their families. They have their problems. Everybody has the same heartaches. Everybody cries. Everybody laughs. Everybody bleeds. Everybody, you know, is the same in that way. So to me, I just think you should listen more, care more. And we ha our slogan at the Imagination Library is do more, care more, be more, and do more. So if we would all do that, I think we it would be a lot, lot better. But I really think we just need to have a little more kindness and just think a little harder instead of just seeing what all we can do to each other. Let's see what we can do for each other. Right on. Yeah. 
And that's the truth. <laughs> You are a very busy woman. We are so grateful for your time. We could listen to you all day long, but you've got a very special gift for all of us, and it involves me getting off this stage and you doing what you do so well. Ladies and gentlemen, Dolly Parton. Well, what I'm going to do, and thank you very much. I, I'm going to have them bring out a microphone and a little guitar, and I'm just going to do a couple of songs with just my guitar. I'll do the little code of many colors, of course, and then I'll uh, sing you what, what we call the theme song for the Imagination Library. Look at the guys there. Handsome, ain't they? <laughs> anyway, as soon as they're done, I'm going to get up and give you this microphone. Dolly Parton, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, do that. Okay, move this one back a little. Okay, I think I'm ready. So I'm sure a lot of you know this little song. It's a story uh, about my mom. Now, I told you about my dad, because I was lucky enough to have a good mom and daddy. As hard as it was and as hard as they had it, they never seemed to complain. They loved us all, and mama... She was one of those people that could sew anything, make it look good, tell you anything, make it sound good, cook anything, make it taste good. She was just one of those mamas, but she made me this little coat that I've become famous for, really. We made a little movie out of it a few years back. You might have seen it on NBC. They show it around Christmas time, but anyway, it's like this little story. It just kind of lives on. It's just about love, acceptance, and just kind of kind of what I was just talking about before, trying to just be a little nicer to people and loving people for who they are. So anyhow, I hope you'll enjoy the little coat of many colors, and it goes like this. Turn the guitar up very loud. Back through the years, I go wandering once again. Back to the seasons of my youth And I recall a box of rags someone gave us And how my mama put the rags to use There were rags of many colors But every piece was small I didn't have a coat And it was way down in the fall Mama sewed the rags together so I never peace with love she made my coat of many colors that I was so proud of. While Mama sewed, she told a story from the Bible she had read about a coat of many colors Joseph wore. And then she said, I hope this coat will bring you good luck and happiness. And I just couldn't wait to wear it. And Mama blessed it with the kiss. My coat of many colors that my Mama made for me. Made only from rags, but I wore it so proudly. And although we had no money, I was rich as I could be. In my coat of many colors, Mama made for me. So with patches, on my breeches, holes in both my shoes, in my coat of many colors, I hurried off to school just to find the others laughing and making fun of me in my coat of many colors Mama made for me. And oh, I couldn't understand that because I felt I was rich and I told them of the love Mama sewed in every stitch, even told them all the story. Mama told me while she sewed and why my coat of many colors was worth more than all their clothes. They didn't understand it and I tried to make them see. One is only poor, only if they choose to be. It's true we had no money, 
But I was rich as I could be in my coat of many colors. Mama made for me, cause she made it just for me. so much you know it is my belief that if you happen to have a good mom and daddy that is one of the greatest gifts that God can bestow on you wouldn't you agree with that now some people are not that lucky but I was and uh, I think back on my folks a lot I often am just sorry that mom and daddy ain't around today to see all the good things that's happened to me in my life and I appreciate them because so much of it had to do with them. And anyhow, I always think of them, and every time I talk about Daddy, about the coat of many colors, I mean, the uh, Imagination Library sang this little song about Mama, it always keeps home in my heart. And that's one of the things that saved me as an entertainer and artist, because some people kind of run off the rails somewhere along the way because they maybe didn't have that kind of a grounding and that sort of a upbringing, but I can always go home in my mind, no matter where I am or what I'm going through. I always just think of home, and I'm always feeling a little better about that. Anyway, I want to sing you another song now. Uh, this is a song when I put the Imagination Library together and it started to do good. I thought, well, every program needs to have some sort of a theme song. <laughs> and you know me, I'm good about writing songs. So I thought, well, what will I write this about? <clears throat> and I thought, well, I'll write it kind of about myself. I'll write it about people like me and people like you that really um, know that we need to try. No matter what it is we're up against, no matter how bad things seem to be in our lives, and of course we do all have a lot of burdens to carry. We all have a lot of problems, especially in this day and time. It's hard to know hardly what to do, ain't it? But anyhow, I thought, well, I've always tried, no matter what else happened, I've always tried to do my best. And I thought, well, that'll be a good theme song, just try. So that's what this one's called. And I hope, as my mama would say, I hope you get a blessing out of it. <laughs> okay, it goes like this. <clears throat> I have chased after rainbows I've captured one or two I've reached for the stars And I have even held a few I've walked that lonesome valley Topped the mountains, soared the sky I've laughed and I have cried But I have always tried Cause I've always been a dreamer and dreams are special things but dreams are of no value if they're not equipped with wings so secure yourself for climbing make ready for the sky don't let your chance go by you'll make it if you try so try to be the first one up the the highest flying dreamer in the sky and try your best to be an inspiration for others that are still afraid and shy and try to make the most of every moment cause if you So try each day to try a little harder And if you fail, get up and try again You know, nothing is impossible If you can just believe Don't live your life in shackles When faith 
can be the key. The winner's one that keeps determination in his eyes, who's not afraid to fly and not afraid to try. So try to be the first one up the mountain and try to be the first to touch the sky. And don't let somebody tell you you can't you'll never really know if you don't try and the first step is the one that's always hardest but you'll never really know if you don't try And thanks for coming, and thanks for all your help. And let's just get more books in the hands of more children. How's that? Well, I tumble out of bed and I stumble to the kitchen, pour myself a cup of ambition, yawn and stretch and try to come to life. Shower and the blood starts pumping Out on the streets, the traffic starts jumping With folks like me on the job From nine to five, yeah! Working nine to five What a way to make a living Barely getting by It's all taken and no giving They just use your mind And they never give you credit It's enough to drive you crazy if you let it nine to Give it up for Dolly Parton! Was that amazing or what? Dolly, you are our hero. Thank you for creating this program for all of us and for our children and communities across the land. It's not over, everyone. We need your continued support and passion to ensure this program sustains into the future. It is my pleasure to present our last speaker of the program, good friend and owner of three Washington radio stations and former chairman of the Washington State Association of Broadcasters, please welcome John Paul. Good afternoon. What an amazing achievement we get to celebrate today, a once-in-a-lifetime afternoon to spend with Dolly Parton. My name is John Paul, and I'm the former board president of the...